Hello there, this is Toby, and this is the beginning of a series where uh, we code a uh, programming language from scratch. The programming language is called Smalling. A little bit of preface. So previously, I have uh, created a set of videos called How to Make a Programming Language. There's currently 19 videos in this video series, which you can find on my website, tobyho.com. All of the videos are completely free available on YouTube. One thing that I have found that is missing is a walkthrough of a complete programming language built from end to end, uh, which is what this series is meant to address. So what I want to do is sort of set up a specification for a very small programming language that you can build on your own with guidance from this set of videos. I have a code example here of what this programming language is going to look like. Syntax-wise, it's quite similar to JavaScript. It has this arrow function syntax, which I'm going to call lambda functions in the tradition of Lisp. This programming language is very small because it follows the tradition of Lisp in leveraging the expressive power of lambda functions. I broke it down into these series of steps that we'll be following, uh, starting from the parser, the lexer, um, making AST files, building the parser for these various syntaxes, and then building the generator for the various syntaxes. We won't necessarily go in this order, we might jump around a little bit uh, from episode to episode, but this is basically more or less the set of steps that we will be following. If you have been following this series, then I think you should have a familiarity with the architecture of a programming language. If you do not, please go ahead and uh, take a watch of the at least the first video in this series to get some background on that. If you want to follow this project, if you want to build this programming language, this is the URL for the project. So with that, let's get into it. Let's get into the code. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, set up the project, set up the NPM project, as we will be using JavaScript to build this thing. So let's get started with NPM init with a dash y command. That gets us a uh, package.json file, and then Immediately after that, we're going to install moo.js as well as nearly.js. I would say npm install moo and nearly as well, dash dash safe. And then we have both of the dependencies installed. Now, um, the first thing I want to do is set up a lexer using moo.js. What is a lexer? Well, um, in a previous episode, I have covered what lexers are in this moo.js tokenizer with nearly JS. Uh, so if you want more detail about lexers after this episode, then that's where you go. But I will give you a uh, high level explanation here. Let's say I'm going to print the result of one plus one. If this guy was in a string, the job of the lexer is to divide these characters up and group them um, into little chunks that that makes sense. So typically, uh, the word print would be grouped into one trunk. So you would get a token that is print. And typically the parentheses get their own chunk. So you get another token that is the left print, and then add would be in its own chunk. Typically words like print and add are recognized as identifiers or are called identifiers. And then numbers typically are their individual chunks like so let's say this was one two three then the one two three goes in its own chunk um, and then we have two right parents here those go into the own their own chunk as well so these guys here would be the tokens and that's the job of our lexer is divide up this string input into this these separate tokens and usually tokens have types that tells you what kind of thing it is. So typically a word like print or add, they will be off type identifier and symbols like left print and right print, they get their own type. So this would be like L print for short, 
this would be type rbren, and so forth. And once this job has been done by the lexer, we got these little chunks of input. We feed these guys, these tokens, into the parser. And then the parser has an easier time parsing this input because these little chunks have been already sort of typed. And the, the, the parser can use that information. Oh, and these numbers, by the way, they would have the type of num. So that's what the lexer does. And MooJS is a tool that actually makes this quite easy. And we'll see that. So we already installed MooJS. Uh, and we're actually just going to copy their Hello World example and sort of steal, steal that as at least the beginnings of our lexer. So I'll make a file called lexer.js. And the way you use this MooJS lexer is you feed it some input. Uh, and the way you feed it input is by using this reset method, which is a peculiar name for saying read input, but that's OK. Um, so now this example lexer is going to handle white space for us, which is either a uh, space or a tab token. It's also going to handle comments for us, which is two slashes followed by anything. And then I guess this is the end of the string. We have numbers, which I think is only integers. I don't see any decimal points here being matched by this regular expression. And there's string tokens, left pren and right pren, some keywords, and new line. Um, our language actually doesn't have keywords, so I'm going to delete this. Uh, but our language does have these other things. Um, SRD has more things than that. But let's just test out this lexer. Um, so let's say this lexer should handle something like there's a number. Let me use a uptick string so I can have real strings in there. One, two, three, A, B, C. It can it can handle parentheses and so on. So if you feed the lexer this input, it should group these chunks together. This should be a number chunk. This should be a L pren. This should be a right pren, etc. So once you call your reset to feed it a string, then you call next. And each time you call next, you actually get a token object back, which is going to have a type of some value and a value of some value. I'm going to say while true token is going to be lexer.next. And then I'll print out that token. And I guess if there is no more token, then we'll break out of this loop. Otherwise, then we'll print out the token. So let's run this file. And it runs. and. Uh, it's able to parse, well, I shouldn't say parse <laughs> because the parser is the next step, but it will lex. It will lex this input and group it into, as you can see, the first token is the number 123, followed by a WS, which stands for white space, followed by a LPREN, left parenthesis, followed by a string ABC, followed by a R pren, which is a right parenthesis. So uh, this lexer works. Uh, what we want to do is to add the other tokens that we're going to need for our language. So let's just take a, take a look at what tokens we're going to need for our small programming language. Uh, we're going to need something to match these words, these identifiers. Identifiers can either be function names uh, in a function call or variable names in a variable assignment or a variable reference. Um, so I'm going to add that in. I'm going to add something called the identifier. And I'll write a regular expression to match it. Typically, an identifier, the first character of an identifier is a alphabet letter lowercase a to z or uppercase a to z, uh, followed by the same, but also allow for the possibility of an underscore or a digit as the second character up to the last character. And I'll use a star sign to, to mean zero or more of these guys. To give you some example, 
an identifier would be like Apple would be an identifier. It starts with an alphabet letter followed by four more alphabet letters. All of them fit into this, but we could also have numbers. Any one of these guys could be numbers. So that, that is also a valid identifier. Okay, so that's what an identifier is. What MooJS will do with this information is if it matches this regular expression during its lexing process, it'll take the string that matched this regular expression. We'll end up getting a token that has the type of identifier and the value that matches that. Actually, let's just go ahead and make it do that. So I'll, I'll put in Apple as well as Apple with this funky numeric notation and have our lexer lex it. Let me get rid of the other stuff. There, I have an identifier, which is Apple, a white space, and then an identifier, which is A9913. So our identifier works. We already have the left pran and the right pran. We ha have uh, identifier. We have string literals. Uh, we do need we do need this equal sign for the assignment operator as well as this equal greater than for the fat arrow. I'll, I'll call the equal sign assign, and I'll have a fat arrow. The ordering matters here because if it had matched the single equal sign, the lexer actually has no way of matching this greater than sign and it'll get confused. I'll actually show you that. So if we gave it a fat arrow like this, yeah, when it saw this greater than sign, it got confused because it saw this equal sign and assigned it to an assigned token. So this doesn't work. Uh, and, and it's left over with a greater than sign, which it has doesn't have another rule that can match just a greater than sign. So if we want, we want this to work, we have got to put the fat arrow before the assign. And that should work out for us. We get a fat arrow. Um, and we let's say we have a assigned token here as a next thing. And then now it's able to match the assigned token. Alternatively, what we could also do is instead of having a fat arrow, just have a greater than token like that, and then leave it up to the parser in the next step to piece together this assigned token and the greater than, than token. But I think for our purposes, I think this is a simpler solution to have a fat arrow first and then the assigned token second. So we do have the comment, which their example already supplies. So nothing to be done. We, we totally stole a lot of code from uh, Moo.js. I actually think that's all of the token types that this language needs. So what I'm going to do is actually write a simple function to test this. I'm going to read in this file and feed all of it into this lexer and see if it is able to lex all of it correctly. So make a main function using the async await syntax. I'll bring this code into that function. Um, I'm going to use the FS module. Uh, okay, I'll put in this semicolon. I'm actually going to go ahead and install the MZ module, which is a module that I like for dealing with the file system that gives me a promiseified library for the file system. So say code is equal to uh, wait fs that read file example that small which is the program i have on the right hand side after reading in this file we'll get a buffer object which will turn into a javascript string and there is the code i'll take this code and feed it into our lexer with lexer that reset let me get rid of this lexer that reset so now I believe we have fed the lexer all of the code and we're going to call lexer.next and print out each token. If all of that works without a failure, then we can conclude that our lexer is able to handle all of the input in this program. No, oh, we forget about the braces these curly braces. So let's l add token types for the curly braces. Curly braces are similar to parentheses, so I put them next to them. I'll call this left brace, L brace, and R brace. 
and yeah, it was able to lex all of this file and match all the characters to one of the predefined tokens. And each token, as you can see, is an object that has a type as defined by this lexer here, mu.js based lexer, has a value and a text field. Currently, all of the values are the same as the text field. There is an option of converting the value to be something different if you would like. Uh, that, that's a configuration you can make to the lexer, which we're currently not using. There are line numbers, line and column numbers for each token, which will actually be very helpful in uh, error reporting, which is one of the future topics I plan to cover in this channel. So there we have it. We have a working lexer. In the next episode, we will continue on and start building the parser.